Hello everyone, Astral Chemistry here. In one of our last videos, we explained how capsaicin could be purified and obtained in a reasonably pure form from an extract of chili peppers. So, of course, that was a special case of separating an organic compound using acid base reactivity. Now we would like to give you a more general outlook and explanation of how separating organic compounds using their acid base reactivity can be easily accomplished in the laboratory. For the sake of this demonstration, let us assume that the only purification techniques that we can perform are distillation fractionation, crystallization and of course liquid-liquid extraction. So we assume that no column chromatography or HPLC can be performed. So for this demonstration let us assume that we have a mixture of an organic base an organic acid and an organic neutral compound that shows no reactivity towards either acid or base. For this explanation let us assume that the organic base is dimethyl aniline the organic acid is benzoic acid and that the neutral compound is symmetric trimethyl benzene. Now let us assume that all of these compounds are mixed together in a beaker. So it would maybe look like a slightly yellow oily liquid with some particulates dissolved in it. Now let's add some diethyl ether which is the following compound. This is a very useful solvent in organic chemistry as you might know. So upon addition of diethyl ether we would see that most of the compounds would go into solution since all of these compounds are reasonably non-polar. Of course some acid base reaction can take between dimethyl aniline and benzoic acid to a small extent so we could end up with some particulates still in the beaker. So let us add one molar sodium hydroxide solution. We would of course obtain a biphasic mixture with the diethyl ether layer on top and the aqueous layer on bottom.
Now think about which compounds would prefer to be dissolved in a diethyl ether and which compounds would prefer to dissolve in the aqueous basic layer. So let me quickly draw the structures again. Our dimethyl aniline, our benzoic acid, and our symmetric trimethyl benzene. Let's start with the dimethyl aniline. Dimethyl aniline is not acidic, thus it is not affected by the base. However, a small fraction of it could be protonated due to the presence of our benzoic acid. So that small amount of protonated dimethyl aniline could be deprotonated and thus dissolve in the diethyl ether since it is nonpolar. Let's take a look at the benzoic acid. Benzoic acid is of course, as the name implies, acidic. Thus it can easily be deprotonated by sodium hydroxide, which is a strong base. This will form <coughs> sodium benzoate, which is a salt. Thus its polarity is greatly increased, so it would preferentially dissolve in the aqueous layer. Since the polarity of the trimethyl benzene is not affected by either acid or base, it is going to stay in the organic layer. Now in practice, we would transform the mixture to a separating funnel. We would then drain off the lower aqueous layer that contains our sodium benzoate. We would then add another fraction of sodium hydroxide solution and shake the separatory funnel vigorously to maximize the contact area between the two immiscible solid solvents. This will extract another portion of the benzoic acid from the diethyl ether. So in the end, we would end up with a beaker containing sodium benzoate dissolved in water. To obtain the pure benzoic acid, you simply have to add an acid, for example, two molar hydrochloric acid solution. This will protonate the benzoic acid, thus decreasing its polarity, so that solid benzoic acid would start to crystallize from solution. This can then be filtered off, washed, and recrystallized from a suitable solvent, for example, boiling water. Since we now extracted the benzoic acid from the mixture, we are left with trimethyl benzene and dimethyl aniline in the organic layer.
to separate these compounds you can now add for example one molar hydrochloric acid solution This will again form a biphasic mixture with the organic layer on top and the aqueous acidic layer on bottom. Now which compound would preferentially dissolve in the organic layer and which would preferentially dissolve in the aqueous layer? Since dimethyl aniline is basic, it is going to be protonated by the hydrochloric acid, <clears throat> thus it will form a salt and will preferentially dissolve in the aqueous layer. Since our trimethylbenzene is not affected by either acid or base, it remains in the organic phase. We can then again separate the phases using a separatory funnel as I explained earlier. So we would end up with our dimethylamine hydrochloride in the aqueous layer and with the trimethylbenzene in the ether layer. To obtain both compounds in pure form, you would evaporate off or distill off the ether and you would be left with a pure oil mostly composing of trimethylbenzene. You could then distill it to obtain it in a pure form. To obtain dimethyl aniline in pure form, one has to freebase it. You can add two molar sodium hydroxide solution, for example. This will deprotonate the dimethyl aniline hydrochloride, greatly decreasing its polarity, and upon adding diethyl ether it would preferentially dissolve in the organic layer so using the same process with the separatory funnel you could then obtain diethyl ether with the free amine dissolved into it. Simply distilling off the diethyl ether will yield you the pure dimethyl aniline. This can then be distilled to obtain it in a pure form. Hopefully this explanation was useful for you and you have learned something. This process is very easy to carry out and you can use a broad array of organic solvents and acids or bases. This technique is particularly useful for the amateur chemist when isolating chemicals from OTC products. Thank you for watching. Please support us on Patreon.